G'day folks, um, at the moment we're back here and I'm painting track. Now, a lot of people do this with an airbrush. I'm actually, because it's only a small layout, I'm actually doing this with a, uh, with a paintbrush instead. Um, it can be tedious, uh, but uh, the results will speak for themselves in the end. As you know, all the track here is second hand, so by giving this coat of paint over the rails, it will uh, bring the whole thing together. Um, the tyres, the sleepers, they will have a, a colour paint put over them at a later stage. I'm just going to get all this rail done first, then I'll go through and uh, give all these sleepers a, a light touch of, of, of a, a grey, and maybe pick out a few on a light brown colour. So I'm going to carry on for the painting, get this done, and uh, we'll see how things turn out in the end. Hey, we're back here now, uh, painting the sleepers. What I've got here is just a, a mix of light grey. It's probably about 50-50 paint and water. And what I'm doing is just going over sleepers randomly. And what that'll do, when it dries, it'll dry to a light shade. Um, looks like more of weathered timber rather than a heavily bleached timber. Um, the paint being a wash will pick up all the grain in the in the sleeper as well. What I'll do uh, once this is dry, I'll, I'll I'll scan over everything and give you guys a look at what what the results are. Um, after the grey, I'll go through with a light tanny brown sort of a colour and just touch a few sleepers up here and there. The idea is to bring the whole lot together. As you can see along here, there's a fair bit of plaster on there, so boy. Touching that with the uh, the paint, I can actually, you know, hide that plaster or disguise that plaster anyway. So it's a tedious job, um, but the results will speak for themselves when we're done. So once this is all painted up, the uh, rail head cleaned. That's what I didn't mention before. But um, and we go into the ballasting phase, you will see a uh, remarkable difference compared to just laying down either new track or second hand track you know if the black sleepers or that uh, that odd brown colour that Pico tend to paint there or produce there track work in well, I'm going to carry on here and uh, I'll get back to you shortly um, you saw, before I go on with the uh, scenery work I need to build a building to situate on one of the sidings now, I've come up with these three plants here. This one here, I will, will keep. Now, I was deciding between these two up here, and I am liking this one here. Now, this will be the uh, dispatch building. This one will be the receiving building. So, the tankers will come into here, and the product will leave this building here. Now, they'll be connected together. To go ahead with this, what I've done is photocopied this building, cut it down to size, as you can see here, without all the major lines on it, and I'll be cutting out the doorways and the window apertures on one mil thick cardboard. So this piece will be glued down. Once it's glued down permanently and all the holes or apertures, windows, doorways are opened up, I will be covering it with scale scenes paper. Now, scale scenes produces paper for double O and N gauge, but what I've done is, uh, Downloaded this, thrown it into the uh, the computer and scaled it down to 1 to 87 or 87% which is HO scale. Um, once that's all wrapped around and I've done all, all the buildings which include the side walls, uh, back wall, well the back wall is going to be low relief anyway, um, side walls, receiving dispatch docks, whatever, and the small platforms, I'll be able to uh, proceed with this. Now this gives an idea of the profile of the building on the front of the receiving dock. So this here will be the front wall as you can see over here. The small platform which is a scale six foot wide and it will have an awning on it. Now I haven't decided what I'm going to do with the awning yet, whether it's going to be made out of plastic or whatever, but um, I'll get to that shortly. Anyway, I'm going to uh, start gluing the, uh, the paper down to the uh, one mil cardboard. I will be using thicker three mil cardboard here as a backing to it or to stiffen the structure up. I would have used foam core. Uh, only difference is, is the foam core would have left a you know three three and a half mil wide opening around the doorways, which I didn't really want that. I want more of a prototypical look. Anyway, onwards and upwards. I'll get onto this and we'll see how we uh, progress.
Welcome back to part two of the series of, on how to build a small shelf layout. I've had to build this building here so I can work out where I'm going to put my retaining walls between the building and the scenic break here. Now these two bits of foam core here that I've knocked up will be covered in brick paper just like the building and there will be another lower wall just in through here and a walkway beside the building. That area there will be covered with uh, a mound of grass and also down along the front here, right down to about here somewhere. I've actually drawn a diagram up here which will show you roughly how it'll look and where the greenery will be. Um, on here the greenery will be the grass, you can see the embankment up in this top corner here and the run along the bottom. Um, more of a hill up in the back top corner over here and then a little, little mound over this side. I will be building a small station platform which will sit right here, you can see a little building sitting there. Managed to grab that from Joe at Casula Hobbies. Thanks Joe. Now, the whole scenery will be uh, carved out of styrofoam. So I've got this block here, I'll just put it here in front, and that'll be cut down to size and glued into shape with PVA. Now I use PVA because it's not abrasive, it won't cut into or melt the styrofoam. So my next stage will be to cover these bits of uh, foam core and paper, shape up the piece of foam to fit into that corner there and also down along the front edge here and then the back corners down here around the station building. One thing I have done since uh, the last video is go through and paint the track. As you can see the sleepers are slightly different colours from greys, browns, uh, you know tanny colours and all that to represent maybe a couple of new sleepers. So. That was done. That, that's, that's painstakingly slow, but the results once the track is ballasted is really good. As you can see, the rails aren't all that clean on top. I'll wait till I've done all the ballasting before I carry on cleaning the rails. I just use a Pico track rubber to do that, and the rails will come up Mickey Mouse again. All these gaps you see here, wherever, they'll be filled in with a couple of sleepers that I'll slice the uh, one one side of the uh, the chairs off so I can slide them under the, under the rail. Once that's done, um, I'll get back to you shortly with all the foam cut in place, glued in, and we'll carry on the next session. Cheers. Okay, we're back with all the foam now, and it's roughly being cut to shape and size. As you can see, um, some pieces aren't all that matching, you could say, like this piece over here, you know, where one side's a little bit higher than the other. Um, I've still got some of this foam left over from that one block that I showed you at the, at the, in the first section of the video. Um, what I will do now is glue all this down like I said before, and then we're going to take a, uh, either a wire brush or a, or a sharp knife to it, and we're going to create the landforms. Because if you look down through here, it is quite narrow. So what we want to do here is put a slope on the, on the mound here back down to the railway line same down here where we've got to bring it up to a retaining wall there we've got to change all the shape of that and then file down this back end here but looking at the plan that we've done here we've got this piece in through here top piece there the hill over the back and a piece for this bottom corner here so we're traveling okay you just got to remember that the plan up here isn't the scale it's just a representation of what it will look like eventually anyway onwards and upwards I'll be back soon. Okay, back again. I've um, glued all the foam down and carved it to shape. Now, this is all done with the wood saw out the backyard. I dare not do it inside um, to keep myself from getting into any trouble. Plus making a mess and uh, filling the vacuum cleaner up full of little foam beanies. Under this block here, I've just secured a small piece of foam there which will be for a platform. Now the platform I've made is around about 60 foot, 60 scale foot long, uh, made out of balsa wood. Now that's to represent a New South Wales style platform and the little shed will sit about here on top of it. Um, I'm about to go outside and mix up a, a thin plastery mix, very thin, and I'm going to give this a coat. Then I'm going to dab it with, or lay, lay sheets of toilet paper over the top, similar to what I've done just here. Um, once it's down, it sort of binds to the foam quite well and takes up, takes out all this rough texture that we have here. So rather than put on a thick 
faster layer up the, you know, an eighth to quarter inch thick. We we won't need to do that. So um, I'm going to carry on with that and just thought I'd come outside to do the plastering. Um, I'm not actually using a plaster. It's more of a cornice paste for putting the cornices up in the up in the home when you're handyman work. Um, as you can see, what I've done down this end is I actually paint the sol paint a solution of the cornice on the, the glue, I should say, over the top as such. And down here, I've got many pieces of paper. Now I'm just going to lay that over the top and tap it into position. Now it doesn't have to be too perfect. I'll do the next one down here as well. You can overlap it. I generally like to do at least two to three layers of this. Now we'll go back up this end where it's incomplete and just dab the paste on. Now this paste will go off fairly quick. The section down here on the corner here I done only 10 minutes ago and it's starting to set already. So as we move along we're just going to keep dabbing this on, protecting the track. As it starts to dry, I'm actually dragging it down a little bit like that, just to create some reels and and uh, erosion in the uh, in the rock face or the uh, the cutting, I should say. Anyway, I'm going to carry on with this, and we'll see the end result afterwards. Well, I've just completed this whole front section of the layout, even though we're facing the other direction. And down the end here, we have this rather steep section here that I need to smooth out to about where my finger is. I'm going to use a homemade sculptor mold, which I have here in the bowl. Now, if you go through my other videos, you'll find a link to, the, to, uh, to how to make this, but I'll provide a link in the description below. Um, it's quite easy, I'm just going to mix that with a bit of water, massage it into place, let that go off and then I'll finish with a second layer of paper and corner cement mix. Okay, the plaster is all set, or I should say our plaster and uh, toilet paper mix and as you can see it's formed a nice solid, nice solid base. I've already started putting some colour down which is a thin wash of raw sienna. Now, it's probably a 60-40 mix, 60% water, 40% paint. Once this goes on, what I'll be doing is going over and highlighting in raw umber and burnt umber. Some of the raised sections of the rock and what have you in this area here. But the yellow is critical. It's the main colour here, um, typical of New South Wales. As you can see, um, there's some darker sections in there and some lighter white areas. Now that's from where the paint is actually, or the wash I should say, is blended inside all the crevices which actually gives a really really good effect. Um, there's my paint solution there, as you can see it's quite watery. I'm going to continue on with this. Okay we're back again, as you can see the platform's in place now and also I've touched up all the raw sienna with a bit of raw umber and uh, burnt sienna just to colour in some rocks and what have you. There is a little bit of white coming through there, which I'll touch up again tomorrow morning. It's getting rather late here in Sydney. But um, look, you don't have to use those colours if you don't want to, you know. Always have a look at the area you're modelling first before you choose to, to paint the plaster layer of your layout. Um, some other place might have a red soil or a deeper brown soil or even a black soil. So you guys choose what you want to choose. Um, this is just pretty remnant of what we have here in New South Wales and Australia. So that's what I'm building here, a little New South Wales shunting or shelf layer. And um, we'll carry on. Hopefully tomorrow we'll get the ballasting and some grass down. Till then.